this is the piece that I'm going to uh, spray uh, polycrylic finish on with a spray gun, mostly just to show that it can be done. Uh, this is uh, the one of the wing tables to the table saw rebuild that I'm doing on this old table saw I have. And uh, this is two pieces of three quarter inch thick uh, birch plywood glued together and then a uh, blue plastic laminate layer on top. The uh, entire thing is uh, edged in hard maple. This already has three layers of polycrylic on it. The first two layers were done with a brush and with uh, 220 grit sandpaper hand sanded in between uh, coats all, all over all the surfaces. After those first two coats, then I used 320 grit sandpaper on uh, just the top and sprayed one layer of polycrylic on. After that, it had several hours to cure, then um, I have already hit this with 400 grit sandpaper. Um, I normally wouldn't go that high of sandpaper when it's just wood, but because of this plastic laminate is so smooth, um, every little detail, every little uh, every little uh, imperfection in the finished coat shows up on it really well, really uh, very visibly. So that's why I'm going all the way to 400 grit. This fourth coat will be the last uh, coat of polycrylic, assuming everything goes well. And uh, I'll show you how that's, uh, how this works. Okay, so this is my uh, little staging area I have um, with the gun, my stand, the polycrylic, obviously the tools I need. And if you're going to use polycrylic, there's a couple of things you need to know. First off, I would highly suggest that you already have warm water with some uh, dishwashing detergent already dissolved in it and ready to go um, for cleanup afterwards. The thing to remember with polycrylic, if you're going to shoot it with a spray gun, is that uh, you got to get the, as soon as you get done shooting it out of the gun, you got to get it out of the gun. Um, so cleanup needs to happen immediately after you get done spraying. If you let polycrylic dry inside the gun, you will have a devil of a time trying to get it back out. Um, you'll have to use some of the most caustic um, chemicals in the world uh, or you'll just end up throwing the gun away. So that's the thing to remember. This particular brand of polycrylic is Minwax. It's a water base, which is one of the nice things about polycrylics. Um, as you can see, it's milky in color. You do not shake it. You need to stir it and stir it well. One of the things I like about polycrylic is that it's water-based, therefore uh, cleanup is just simply uh, soap and water. It's non-toxic. It's non-flammable. Um, you don't really need a respirator, though I would suggest you still wear uh, um, you still wear one uh, just because just because the stuff is technically safe uh, it's not going to asphyxiate you um, still I would don't think I would want any of that in my lungs as far as the spray gun setup I have my uh, the tank pressure for my air compressor is at 120, but I have a regulator on it coming out that uh, brings it down to about 40 PSI uh, coming down the line to the gun. At the gun, I also have a regulator that knocks it back. I've got it set to knock it back to about 28 PSI, which is the max pressure for the gun. This is an HVLP system. And uh, as you can see, I'm not just pouring this in. I'm using a, uh, I'm using a, I think this is two tablespoon uh, measuring cup. Not that I'm measuring the amount, I'm just using it as a scoop. Uh, the thing you want to avoid is, like I said, you don't, you don't shake this, you stir it. And the idea is to keep bubbles from forming in it. This stuff is pretty thick and you cannot thin it um, with anything to, uh, uh, to shoot it. You just got to play with it as thick as it, as it is. Um, I also don't bother straining it uh, because it pretty much will just 
barely get through the strainer in a lot of cases. All right, make sure my pressure's up and I've already set all my knobs. Okay, part of the setup for uh, shooting polycrylic out of a spray gun is you need to have, like I said, I've got uh, 120 in the tank, 40 PSI coming down the line. I knock it back to 28 PSI and then with the pressure on the gun, I got it knocked back to almost only 10 PSI coming out of here. The HVLP, you can think of because the polycrylic is so thick that you want to go extremely H and extremely L in the HVLP. The high volume of polycrylic coming out and very low pressure. The reason is, is the uh, polycrylic atomizes out in much thicker droplets than you would get with, say, a lacquer. Um, uh, or it's, it's almost like an unthinned paint. So if you are shooting those atomized droplets out at a higher velocity, then they tend to bounce and not really adhere. They have a little bit more cohesion than they have adhesion. So you're trying to get as high a volume out at a, as low a pressure and therefore low speed as you can to get as much um, stick. So I've got, uh, I've got my uh, trigger detent set all the way down so that uh, at, at the bottom stop so that you get the maximum amount of, uh, of uh, liquid flow out. And I've got my uh, spray knob set for, for a fairly wide vertical fan. Um, but I can also, with the thumb knob, I can bring it back to concentrate that fan down a little bit more if I need to. Um, and we should be good to go. Now, I'm just going to use a simple dusk mask and, a, uh, and I have a fan that I'm going to turn on so you may not be able to hear me quite as well um, to keep positive air movement across. So, And then uh, I'll start shooting. All right, so I'm not actually using a respirator uh, because this stuff does not actually, uh, is non-toxic and non-flammable. So you won't get asphyxiated on it, but I still don't want those particulates in my lung. And a normal dust filter mask is uh, filters out and is uh, tight enough that it'll filter out those large particulates that this comes out in. Even with that wide fan pattern, because these particles are so large as they're coming out. Your stroke speed is gonna be much slower. As you can see, so much of it bounces and goes out in the, in the wind stream. Okay, so in case you didn't hear it during the uh, air compressor running, You'll notice that the distance that I have the gun from the workpiece is only about six inches. So that's much closer than you're typically going to use a spray gun at. And that's because of all the things I talked to you about earlier. You'll also notice that the uh, stroke is extremely slow to make sure that you get a nice even, even coat. The other thing about polycrylic, why well, you have to be so careful about letting it dry in here is because it does dry very, very quickly. As you can see down here, I'm still wet down here, but up top here, it's almost uh, dry again. You can almost start hitting it with another, another pass. Get a little bit on the edges here. Just uh, make sure we stay pretty. The other thing I find is that uh, I'll set this up where I have a light source coming at a fairly sharp angle so that I can, uh, I'm standing upwind with the fan and I can see from the reflection, I can see where my wet part is and where it goes dry as I make the passes. So I try to overlap the fan strokes uh, evenly. 
I'll mention to you, notice the uh, technique I'm using for the for each stroke. Notice I'm not bending my wrist. I'm moving my entire arm and upper body. I need a bigger air compressor. I use my entire arm and upper body to move the spray gun in a parallel line off the face of the surface that I'm uh, spraying. If you wave the gun back and forth like this, on this end and this end, you will be farther away from the uh, workpiece and the particles of uh, finish or spray or stain will be farther apart and you won't get as thick. So to keep and maintain an even thickness, you move the gun in a you move the uh, you move the gun in a parallel line so that everything stays at an equidistant away from the uh, from the workpiece. Of course, you're always right in the middle. Some little fleck of something, right when you're in the middle of spraying, comes and drops itself right on the surface. Alrighty, I was about to call it done, and now I got a little divot I gotta go over. Okay, we're gonna call that good on the workpiece. Just gonna leave that where it's at and dry. But now, we're going to very quickly take the remaining cup full, save whatever's left. Okay, right on the water, right on the water. Get that loosened up, right on the water. Over top the can as you pull out the filter, filter out you should get should be some more in the gun so be aware of that let that drain out you can recapture that filter in the water okay take the nozzle off that goes in the water and this should all be empty Give a little swish. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that into the sink and we'll clean it up. And I'll... Okay, so I just bring everything, uh, tub and all, in here to the uh, kitchen sink. They've got running with uh, warm water. And you basically just wash everything out. Pretty simple. The secret to polycrylic is that it's, uh, because it's water-based, it's just soap and water cleanup as long as it's still wet. Once the uh, polycrylic dries, it's permanent.
Now, just for good measure, this is technique. I'll sit here and just run some clean water through the gun, back out on the air compressor. Warm water. Okay, now that I've got clean water and it's all, all the equipment is all cleaned up, I'll just put it back on, uh, back on the air compressor and just, this is all just water now. I'll just run some water through it. And then uh, after you've run some water through, uh, I just go ahead and empty out the rest of the water out of the, out of the cup. Just run some air through it a little bit. You'll see it'll get some residual water. Shake it out until you don't get any. That's how you clean up at the end. So there you have it. You actually can use polycrylic with a sp uh, spray gun. You just need to remember these things that I was talking about. You need to uh, keep your the volume high coming out of the gun, the pressure low coming out of the gun, as low as it can be, and still have a cogent stream. You need to uh, make sure that you clean the gun immediately uh, as soon as you're done spraying, because if that polycrylic dries in the gun, your gun's probably done. Um, last thing is keep your uh, your strokes very slow and methodical. Keep the gun uh, an even di uh, parallel distance away from the work surface the whole way, and uh, you're gonna your your stroke is gonna be very slow so that you can actually get some of that polycrylic built up on it. I would suggest using a respirator always, no matter what, whenever you're using a, a sprayer. Uh, no matter what the material is, but the nice thing about polycrylic is it's non-toxic, non-flammable, um, and as long as you have some positive uh, airflow, you should be able to stand upwind of where, what you're spraying. Uh, I didn't use a respirator today because I was trying to also talk into the microphone so that uh, we could, uh, uh, so that I could uh, narrate what I was doing. But anyway, uh, this thing's still drying, but uh, as you can see, it's already. Um, it's already uh, no longer tacky to the touch. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.